Listen to the Vibes. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Listen to the Vibes. I'm very happy to welcome Shanti Hershenson. Did I get that right? Yeah. All right. Tell us about yourself. Of course. So um, my name is Shanti. I'm 15, no, 16 years old, and I have pub- I just published my 15th book. I have been just writing and publishing books since I was around 12 years old, but I've been writing short stories and things like that for basically as long as I can remember. So this has always been something that I really, really love, but it hasn't been until the last couple of years that I've been able to turn this into a pretty like successful business. Is it difficult, especially at your age, to get a book published? I mean, where, did they take you seriously? That depends. So I self-publish with Kindle Direct Publishing and Ingram Spark, but there are still a lot of hoops to jump through, especially, you know, there's things like cover design, for example, and editing and all of that. And yeah, it can be hard to be taken seriously. Um, I vividly remember when I was about 12 years old and I was approaching cover designers, one of them was like, no, I can't work with you. You're 12. No, thanks. Um, Which is funny because, you know, the book that I ended up, uh, you know, publishing, like, was did pretty well and like i wasn't one of the ones that i scrapped or anything like this cover designer genuinely could have worked with me but you know i kind of get it because honestly i wouldn't really want to work with a 12 year old either but also um you know it could have been kind of cool your books are not all the same tell me about the genres that you write yeah so primarily i write science fiction and fantasy but i've also kind of explored like some contemporary books particularly like ones with like you know characters who are in high school or even younger characters um recently I just wrote a book about this young girl who gets lost in the mountains that's a very basic description of what happens in the book but it's kind of the case and then I also have you know books that are more sci-fi that have like robots and you know they take place in the future and there's all that cool stuff too now they see that's more along the lines what i like to read the science fiction type stuff how how much can you tell us because i know you don't want to give away too much so i have a couple different sci-fi series now some of them are complete some of them are incomplete um but typically they have a couple different like main themes i have for example there's Never Dying, which takes place in a future where a random handful of society is immortal due to a genetic mutation, and it explores the consequences of that as well as how the um, government would respond to that. There's also um, Biome Lock, which takes, that was my first, that's the first book I ever wrote. It was something, but um, it's a pretty good book-ish, and that book is, a, it takes place in the future where there has been this alien invasion, and actually takes place through. 30 years after the alien invasion and it shows how the aliens have taken the humans captive and they're making them live in these separate like biomes and they like it's kind of like a they're like experiment or they're pets it's very interesting and then um there's also like the god's right hand which focuses on a future in which america has split into east and west america due to a civil war and then there's this girl who finds out that she has this special power that may or may not like completely change the focus of the war As far as writing, does this take away from your time spending with your friends or what's your discipline? So I write a thousand words every single day. Um, Sometimes I do more, but I try to never do less than that. And in some ways, sometimes I'm like, oh, I have to write first. Um, But usually I can still fit in hanging out with people and writing. It's, you know, maybe a couple hours a day, but also like it's what I enjoy doing. So that helps. And, you know, it's not like I am in my room every every second of every single day writing. It's a little like it's a lot easier than that. So now, apart from the writing, you have to go out and and promote it. How much of that takes up your time? Marketing takes up almost as as much of my time as writing does. It's like a whole nother world. And I do I do all of my own marketing. I do all of my own outreach, so then it can be incredibly, that can make it difficult sometimes, like when I have a ton of marketing things to do and then a ton of writing things to do to really get some other things in. But I still always try to relax or I try to like see people. Um, But yeah, marketing wise, that is, I think it's almost more time consuming than writing, actually. You get to go to bookstores and sign your books and that kind of thing? 
Yep. <laughs> is that is it? How's that feel? I have to say, it's one of my favorite feelings. Like watching all of the marketing kind of play out and watching everything come together is always so great. Especially when it comes to like bookstores and like actually meeting fans. That's always like amazing. And how many of them are shocked when they realize how young you are? A lot. Um, <laughs> particularly like when I do book festivals and stuff and I have random people coming up to my booth. I always have people come up and they're like, where's the author? Can we talk to the author? And it's like, I'm right here. <laughs> well, I only bring that up because uh, not a lot of kids your age are publishing books. They're partying or going to ball games and pep rallies and all that kind of stuff. How do your peers treat you? Typically, I don't, you know, I don't tell them a lot about it. Mm -hmm. um, except like when I'm really good friends with people, then I will be like, you know, we'll talk about it and stuff. But when random people find out, a lot of them do tend to make a big deal out of it. You know, they'll be like, oh my gosh, this is your book. Um, if they see like, I don't know, sometimes like, I have, I have like stickers of my book and it's it's really fun and I actually like really um you know enjoy talking to people about it um and typically the reactions are all pretty positive um I have had like random people at school like make fun of me for writing books but it's like you know I think it's kind of cool so like why are you making fun of me over that <laughs> yeah look at my bank account <laughs> <laughs> I would imagine it's jealousy because not everybody goes and pursues what they want to do. How, do how do you deal with that I try to just ignore it. There's really not much, like, I can really do about it. You know, if it's online, like, sometimes people will comment, like, mean things. Like, every once in a while, I haven't actually seen any in a couple months. Then, you know, you just remove it, and maybe you block them, and you just move on. And then in person, like, yeah, really, like, the only thing you can do when someone's, like, jealous about it is just ignore it. And it does, um, you know, it does work. You have dealt with bullying in the past, right? Yeah, of course. Well, tell, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so I've been bullied, like, quite a bit, and, you know, I know a lot of people also that have been bullied, so that really inspires me to try to, like, you know, like, spread awareness about, like, anti-bullying, particularly in schools, of course, because that's usually where it happens, yeah. and um, to do that, like, I've written some books about it, I've made some, you know, social media posts, I've spoken in some places, and it, it it's really something that I feel passionate about. And you've written about it, so can you tell me about the books? Yeah, so particularly there is You Won't Know Her Name, which is a novel told in poetry based on a true story. Mm -hmm. And then there is I Know Her Name, which is like the companion poetry book. And I think that book's pretty cool because it just is a collection of real poems I wrote before, during, and after the time that I wrote You Won't Know Her Name. Mm -hmm. So in some ways it provides like insult. It, yeah, it provides like a look like inside kind of – um you know, what was going on, like, deeper than what the story can tell. Mm -hmm. But then it also provides insight into, like, what's happened, like, after the story ends. So it's really cool. And then there's also Helipads of Heaven, which is about bullying, but it's not, um, you know, it's it's literally has time travel in it. So it's not really, you know, <laughs> like, based on a true story. Has anyone ever come up and thanked you for writing those kind of stories? Because, I mean, I was bullied when I was in school as well. Yeah, it happens quite a bit, or I'll receive like a direct message online and they'll be like hey you know this book really helped me and I always love hearing that I love it when people reach out to me and it really makes me feel like my stories are like valued what's your book schedule so right now I am currently working on a brand new book that I just started literally like a couple days ago now and I'm really liking it it's going you know I'm like on like the third or second chapter mm -hmm. and it's an interesting book. Um, I'm not sure quite where it's going yet. Uh, it's another one that's going to have to do with bullying and all of that. So I'm a little excited for that. But also I'm nervous because I don't know. Like, <laughs> it's a lot different than any of my other books. Mm -hmm. um, but then in terms of releases, I just published book 15, which is called Helipads in Heaven. It's a really cool book. It's the one that's about time travel and bullying. But I also have another book coming out in December. I believe the release date is December 10th. Don't quote me on that. Um, I haven't begun marketing that book yet um, just because it's not one of my larger releases because it happens to be a crossover between two of my older book series. Mm -hmm. So really the audience for that book is pretty narrow. And then after that, I have another book coming out in somewhere early 2024. Wow. 
And what is your aspirations just to continue to write or do you have other plans? Nope. Just really like continue writing and building that platform until this is like, I can basically like support myself with this Mm -hmm. and, you know, getting traditionally published would be kind of cool too. But also right now I'm just trying to build my platform online. You hoping this turns into maybe a movie in the future? Oh, definitely. That would be so cool. (laughs) Who's going to play the parts? I'm always asked that. I like, I never have any idea. Like if you would have asked me this when I was in like seventh or eighth grade, then I would have definitely confidently told you a bunch of names, but I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> what is your plans? You going to college? What's your timeline? Yeah. So I think I want to go to, I of course want to go to college. I'm not sure for what yet, probably like creative writing or something fun like that, that, you know, obviously has to do with what I'm doing right now. And then um i think i want to move to new york Mm. and um then just like continue writing who inspired you to write i have no idea (laughs) i I can give so many different like answers for that i started writing when i was so young so what i remember is just i've i've been reading from Mm. a really really young age so i always thought books were like the coolest thing and then i was like well how do you make a book and then i think that's kind of where it started have you thought of teaching other kids to, you know, go through the same process that you have? Oh, definitely. On um, TikTok, for example, I make a lot of posts um, teaching how to like different writing tips and like how to publish. But mm-hmm. also, I think it would be really cool to teach a writing class at some point. Do you have a website? I do. Um, my website is shantihershenson.com. That's S-H-A-N-T-I-H-E-R-S-H-E-N-S-O-N.com. And what is your social media? So my Instagram is just the same as my website, just at Shanti Hershenson. And then my TikTok is at Shanti Who Writes. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. And I wish you nothing but good luck in your writing. And thank when, you for having me. Oh, of course. And don't forget me when you're famous. Okay. I won't. All right. So and maybe I could get a part in one of your movies or you can write me in one of your books. Of course. <laughs> well thank you again and i want to thank all you folks out there if you are new to the channel i hope you'll come back hit that subscribe button and for my regulars you guys are awesome because you make it possible for me to do this till the next one everyone please take care be kind to one another god bless and peace we hope you enjoyed this episode of listen to the vibes you can catch us on buzzsprout or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts and on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook at The Vibes Broadcast Network.